Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make Boston cream donuts. Hey, Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. Now, for today's recipe, I'm sure many of you know, Boston cream donuts are filled with Boston cream or pastry cream. I recently shared a video explaining how to make pastry cream. So if you have not already checked out that video, you're going to want to go ahead and do that and prepare one batch of my pastry cream first. Let that start to chill in the refrigerator and then you can come back here and we can start making our donuts. Our donuts are going to come together surprisingly easily. In a large bowl, we are going to combine two cups of all-purpose flour with two and a fourth teaspoons of rapid rise or instant yeast. We'll also add a third cup of granulated sugar and a teaspoon of salt. This is just table salt. Now, today's recipe could absolutely be made in the bowl of a stand mixer using a dough hook. However, today I'm going to be showing you how I make it by hand. Now we'll stir all of these ingredients together so they're nicely combined. The next thing you're going to need is two thirds cup of whole milk. Now you want this milk to be warm, so we are going to pop ours in the microwave until it reaches a temperature of about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. I just like to use my instant read thermometer to make sure I'm at the right temperature. And anytime that you're heating a liquid in the microwave, you always wanna stir it before taking the temperature. All right, this is looking pretty good. It's a little bit higher. I wouldn't wanna go too much hotter than this. We'll go ahead and add this to all of the ingredients in our mixing bowl. Now you'll just wanna use either a really sturdy spatula or a wooden spoon to stir everything together until it's mostly combined. And then we're going to add six tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. And we'll stir that in as well. Next, we'll add two large eggs. I like to lightly beat these before adding them to my other ingredients. And three fourths teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now stir everything together. The dough is gonna kinda look a little bit funny at this point, but we are just going to stir until it is completely combined. I know it looks a little messy, just keep going until the ingredients are mostly smooth. It's not gonna be completely smooth yet, but we are going to get there. All right, now I originally had measured out three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, but we only added two to the bowl at this point. So we are going to gradually add additional flour until we have a dough that has reached a consistency where it's clinging to itself. You don't want it to be too dry, but you don't want it to be so sticky that it's clinging to the sides of the bowl or that if you touch your finger to it, a lot of dough comes off on your finger. Now, after adding all three and a half cups of my flour, I still feel like I need a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit more right now. All right, now if I were doing this with a dough hook and a stand mixer, I would just continue to let it mix until it looks nice and smooth. It's going to be quite an arm workout for me to continue to use my spatula to mix everything together. So at this point, I'm going to turn it out into a clean, lightly floured surface. All right, now we are not going to do a lot of kneading here. It's not like when we make bread, we want to keep this dough pretty sticky. So while you can add more flour as needed, you don't wanna make the dough dry. And while I'm kneading it, I'm going to be using a bench scraper just so I can scrape it up and so I can knead it without adding a lot of additional flour. Now I'm just going to work this for about one to two minutes. And once it's looking nice and smooth, I wanna go ahead and let this rest and rise a little bit. Now I'm just going to transfer it to a clean bowl and I'm just gonna lightly drizzle this with a little bit of oil and just use a paper towel to kind of smooth the bowl so we have a light coating on the whole bowl. And we'll place our donut dough right in there. I also like to just turn the dough that way the entire ball of dough has a thin coating of oil on it. All right, now cover this tightly, and we're going to let this rise in a warm, draft-free place until it's doubled in size, which typically takes about 30 to 60 minutes. All right, once your dough has risen, we are going to turn this out onto a clean, lightly floured surface. And then you can just use your hands to pat it down, but I like to use a rolling pin, so I have nice, pretty uniform donuts. And I'm just going to lightly roll this just a little bit until I have a massive dough that's about 3 fourths inches thick. All right, now you'll need a donut cutter or a large cookie cutter like I have. This is a three inch cookie cutter and I'm just going to lightly flour it and we'll cut out our donut holes as close together as we can. Now you want to get as many cuts as possible out of this first roll of dough. So keep them nice and close. 
because while I will re-roll the dough and group up the scraps to get more donuts, those donuts are not going to look as pretty and they're going to be more difficult to fill. All right, so now I have a parchment paper lined baking sheet, but as I think you can see, I've cut this parchment paper into squares. I like to have each donut on its own individual square. Once I go to fry these, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to transfer them individually than if I put them all just straight on the baking sheet or on the same piece of parchment. Of course, with the scraps, you can certainly regroup them. Just keep in mind these donuts aren't gonna look quite as pretty. Okay, so once you've cut out all of your donuts, we are just going to cover this baking sheet. And once again, I'm going to want to let these donuts rise until they're nicely puffed in size. For me, that's usually about 30 minutes, once again, in a warm, draft-free space. Now, while the donuts are rising, I like to start setting up my frying station. To fry these donuts, I like to use a heavy-bottomed, medium-sized saucepan. And anytime you're deep frying, it is critical that you know the temperature of your oil. So I'm going to be using a candy thermometer, and I'm just gonna fit this in the pot and as you can see, it, you do not want the bottom of the thermometer to touch the bottom of the hot of the pot because that would give you a false reading. So make sure it's only going to it's going to be suspended about halfway in your oil. Now we'll add our oil. I like to just use vegetable oil, and I'm going to fill this pot about two to three inches deep. Now the oil does take some time to come to temperature, and if you're doing it properly, it should take some time. You don't want to heat it too quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and set my stovetop heat to about medium, just a, just a notch below medium and I'm going to let that start warming up. Now, as you can see, I have a nice little setup here. I have a cooling rack, which is where I'm going to place the donuts after I've fried them. And underneath, I've placed um, a bunch of sheets of paper towels because this is going to catch any oil that spills. It's just gonna make cleanup a lot easier. I also have this spider for kept for lowering the donuts into the oil and removing them from it. And at this point, we also wanna make sure we have our two other components for Boston cream donuts ready to go. Here I have my pastry cream, which was made in advance and is thoroughly chilled. I am gonna keep this in the fridge until the donuts are ready to be filled because it's gonna be a little bit still. And we can also make our chocolate glaze for the donuts, which is just a simple ganache. Here I have three ounces of chocolate. You can use chocolate chips or you can use cho chocolate bars. And I'm just going to add a half cup of heavy cream to that. And I'm just gonna heat this in the microwave in about 25 second increments, stirring really well in between until I have a nice, completely smooth and glossy glaze. I don't need this just yet, so we'll just set it aside. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes at this point, so let's take a look at our donuts. They're looking pretty good. They kind of look like biscuits. And our oil temperature is right at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can go ahead and start frying our donuts. Now I always start by doing these one at a time. And since I have these little parchment paper slings, I could just drop the donut straight in the oil. I like to just delicately transfer it over to the spider that I'm using and lower it into the oil. We'll fry the donuts on each side until they are a nice golden brown color. Now oil temperature is everything. If your oil temperature is too hot, you're going to end up with donuts that are overcooked on the outside and that are gooey on the inside and undercooked. If your oil temperature is too cool, you're going to end up with greasy donuts. After you have fried your first donut, the best thing you can really do is let that cool for a couple of minutes and then take a look inside and make sure, you just rip that one open, sacrifice it, and make sure it doesn't look undercooked or it's not greasy and really gross inside. After your first donut, always check your oil temperature. You to make sure it gets back to 350 degrees because after frying that first donut usually the temperature will drop or if you have your heat too high you may notice that the heat just is continuing to rise and you may need to adjust your stovetop heat. Now we'll just continue to fry our donuts until we have cooked all of them. All right, now once you've cooked all of your donuts, you're going to want to let them cool a little bit because they're just going to be too hot to handle right now. So I like to give them several minutes to cool down. Once your donuts are cooled, grab yourself a sharp knife and we are just going to insert this about halfway into the donut and take it out. And we're gonna make like a little X. I'm going once more, but halfway into the donut. All right, now grab your pastry cream, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but this is a Wilton 12 tip I like to use, but any small round tip will work. Anything you can pipe the pastry cream through. And we're going to insert this about halfway into the donut, and we're just gonna fill up that donut with our pastry cream. Then after filling the donut, let's grab that beautiful glossy ganache, and we are just going to dip the top of the donut in the ganache, and turn it back over and let that ganache set.
And that is how you make homemade Boston cream donuts. These are best enjoyed fresh, so make sure you go ahead and dig in while well, they still might even be slightly warm. I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. If you tried this recipe out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. That's good. <laughs>